So multi-scale designer, you know, is a, a great simulation tool for the development of predictive material models. We just went over talking about uh, how uh, some of the other tools in our suite can benefit you. Multi-scale designer can be very advantageous for accurate material modeling, specifically for heterogeneous materials. So if you're unfamiliar with what a heterogeneous material is, I'll just give an example to say a carbon fiber composite. So it's anisotropic, meaning that the material uh, values for strength are different based on the orientation of the system. Specifically, what multi-scale designer does is it can actually characterize the fiber and the, the matrix, which we'll talk about you know, why this is so important in the next slide. So really, in a nutshell, multi-scale designer is creating a, a more accurate material model. Uh, it can build you know, whatever kind of lattice or material card you want. Um, so pretty much runs the gamut in terms of infinite possibilities in terms of setup. And the cool thing about it is it can build those material cards for, again, our Altair solvers. Uh, but if you're using an external solver, it works with all the external solvers as well. So it builds a material card and gives you a much more accurate re representation of a heterogeneous material model. So let, let's kind of talk about this a little bit more. I'm sure this might be foreign to some of you. Uh, Multi-scale modeling is, is relatively new. Um, you know, within the past few decades or so, that one of the classical ways, um, so if we think about a heterogeneous material, and I'm just going to talk about it from a composite perspective, I'll talk about a couple other use cases in kind of a subsequent slide. The composites have uh, anisotropic or orthotropic behavior. Classically, how you would kind of set up a composite model is you build up your plies, and they each ply would have, you know, an orthotropic material property. But one of the things in that individual ply across the x, y, and z direction, you know, you'd have different values in the x, y, and z. That's what morphotropic property is. Uh, but it's not factoring in um, kind of the fiber and the matrix orientation. So we can actually look at kind of the microstructure here. It's not necessarily, it's, a, it's not a uniform x, y, z. Like this is what your Young's modulus is going to be in the x and the y and the z. It's, it's really kind of very different. And material scientists have been aware of this. So one of the things that, you know, if you're doing composite design and doing composite structural analysis, the classical approach was you'd always have to kind of um, iterate and make sure your uh, FEA results uh, matched experimental solving. So it could be kind of a, I, I don't want to say tedious, but maybe more labor intensive. What multi-scale designer is actually doing is it's actually uh, looking at the individual scale you know, the, the unit cell at the fiber and matrix and homogeneizing those properties to give a much more realistic perspective of the orthotropic property. So what you do in multi-scale is you kind of set everything up at the fiber matrix level, and then it spits out uh, a material card that you can feed into a composite analysis. So this is actually going to save you time when you're running structural analysis and give you a much more, I don't, I don't want to say accurate, but it's definitely going to get you um, a more efficient kind of modeling approach and more realistic to your material. So the use cases here, like I mentioned, I, I've been talking about composites. That's a real you know, prominent case, you know, unidirectional and we use for composites. But the other thing, I'm sure some of you probably deal in injection molding. Um, if you've ever tried to take um, fiber orientation and then run a structural analysis um, and, and apply an anisotropic properties, you probably know that the fiber orientation is not uniform. It varies. It's not necessarily, you know, everything is this strength value in the X and the Y and the Z. So there's another good use case here is you can kind of create a more accurate material representation of that fiber. Um, then also looking at lattice structures with the use of additive. So all these use cases could potentially be modeled for this clutch pedal right here. You know, clutch pedals can be carbon composite. They, they can be injection molded or, you know, even start looking at some additive manufactured uh, lattice. So by having a much more accurate material representation. Um, when analysts or designers are actually running simulation, they can be confident that their results are gonna meet um, the structural requirements. Long story short, you're gonna have a much more accurate simulation. You're gonna have less time spent building physical prototypes. You see how all these feed, the, the two solvers it's showing here is OptiStruct and Radius, but like I said, we interface with other solvers as well. All right, so let's jump into an example here. I will hop out of here and let's jump into multi-scale here. 
All right, so multi-scale, how it functions, like I said, is you're building um, pretty much that unit cell lattice and you're building um, kind of that material card to be fed into a structural analysis. It's giving a much, uh, and again, this is kind of the tip of the iceberg. You probably spent a lot more time talking about multi-scale and, and all the tools I've talked about today, but let's kind of run through an example and kind of show you the GUI. All right, so first things first, let's move this here. I'm just gonna name this as a webinar. Hit okay. And I will create um, a unit cell model. So you'll see right here, if you remember my one slide, it's it's kind of creating the fiber and also the matrix here. So you'll see right here, I can specify, in this case, this is my fiber, you know, what type of model it's gonna utilize, you know, whether it's a lattice, a, a woven particle, a core. Um, so like I said, there's a lot of uh, applications within this, this tool. Um, I'm gonna say my fiber volume fraction is gonna be 30%. And uh, what it'll actually do is it will kind of create um, how it's gonna mesh the individual elements and how the material card is gonna be applied. Uh, that's what you see right here, the meshing control that's being applied. Uh, I'm just gonna specify just an adaptive setting. So it's gonna automatically kind of create that mesh for me. So what you'll see if I hit run, does this pretty quick. And so let's visualize what exactly I'm talking about. So if I go to visualize here, you'll see that it's creating um, the fiber and the matrix. Um, and it's doing that through kind of creating these individual elements. And what we'll see next, because I'm actually gonna apply the actual materials, um, it's gonna give the materials and homogeneize them to kind of make a, a an accurate perspective of the material for each individual element here. So it's it's kind of doing all the work in the background for you of building the material card and giving a much more accurate representation, uh, you know, for in this case a carbon composite, but it could be for an injection molded model or what have you. Um, I could even open up Hyperworks now and you can kind of see the direct elements it creates. I'll do it real quick just to show you. But bear in mind, um, you can also do this with a, already a pre-established hypermesh model or radius or OptiStruct model where you have the mesh built and you're just trying to get a much more accurate material card. So the input would be the mesh you already have and then building the material data accordingly. And just waiting for it to load real quick. And let me just uh, turn on the results so you can see the mesh better. So yeah, you kind of see right here. Note, I haven't defined any of the materials yet, um, but it kind of gives you an understanding of how it's gonna kind of build out the system. So the fiber and the matrix. Um, so kind of relating things back to what you're seeing here, you know, you kind of have your fiber and your matrix set up. All right, so let's go through our next step here. Uh, okay. All right, so we've built our unit cell. So this is how, when I say unit cell, this is how um, our orientation of our fiber matrix is gonna be set up. We now need to key in our materials for both the matrix and the fiber. So we come over here and key in our material values. So in this case, it's, it's again, it's homogeneizing all these properties. It's, it's putting them across each of these elements. So it's, you know, the classic way of doing this is you wouldn't create this unit cell and you know, you just have orthotropic properties or, you know, for your composite. In this case, it's kind of doing all that for you in the background. All right, so we'll start with the matrix. All right. Oops. And note, I'm doing this for isotropic, but you like I said, uh, this is the tip of the iceberg. You do this for, you know, truly anisotropic, you know, even across the matrix, you know, you could have a lot of different kind of values in terms of what you're keying in here. All right, great. And then if I go to the second, so the matrix and the fiber. So relating again, so here's your, your matrix and your fiber, kind of these little square shapes here. Uh, we can key these in.
Okay, great. Um, you can also specify the different type of material type, you know, what, what you're kind of referring to in this case. I kind of want to create orthotropic materials for a structural analysis and an obstruct. So what I can do is I can hit run. It's going to take these values and apply them to um, the fiber in the matrix. And what you'll see from the actual result here is you'll see that you'll have the material orientation specified, but you'll see in the actual Excel file right here, uh, in both tension and compression, we have the material matrix set up. So this is actually fed as a card card data into um, uh, Opistruct or Radius or whatever solver you have. Um, and then you could even, you know, if you wanted to run a simple test case, you could kind of visualize the results, uh, you know, via Hyperview if you wanted to. Great. Um, you know, if I wanted to do nonlinear material characterization, um, where you actually have uh, bilinear damage, you know, multiple material models here, you could do that as well. So, you know, really give, getting into kind of the, so, some of you composite guys are kind of concerned with having a much more accurate uh, material model built into the tool versus what you classically have had to key in, in whatever FEA tool you're working in. Yeah, 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 yeah.